So what is an ingress controller? To understand, we have to look at the fundamentals of web traffic and system. Every system, whether it's a single application or a bunch of microservices, has an entry point for receiving traffic. This entry point can accept traffic in the form of a URL, a protocol, hostname or DNS, and a path, sometimes even a port number. This endpoint is usually identified by either a DNS or an IP address. So traffic comes in. Now some calls this a proxy and a load balancer or an API gateway, but it doesn't matter. This is an ingress controller. An ingress controller is responsible for a few potential things, like accepting or denying HTTP traffic, SSL termination, meaning we can accept traffic on port 443 via TLS, but then we may not need TLS and route to different port to reach private applications. Routing, so basically deciding where traffic should go. URL writing, so deciding where traffic should go based on the URL path and load balancing so we can decide whether we want 60% of traffic to go to service A or instance A and 40% of traffic to go to service B or instance B. Now ingress controllers under the hood can be powered by many products such as Nginx, HAProxy, Envoy, Traffic, Kong and so forth. Every one of these products have a different configuration, their own syntax, and generally require their own expertise to manage. Ingress controllers allow us to speak the same language. So what if we took the syntax of each one of these products and made it all the same? In this case, Kubernetes speaks YAML. So ingress controllers accept their YAML in the form of an ingress. One ingress controller can accept many ingresses. In an ingress, we simply describe the host DNS we expect traffic on, we say whether we want SSL, the path we want to route based on, and where we would like that traffic to go. The rest really doesn't matter. Kubernetes will translate this into the syntax for the product we are using. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an Nginx Kubernetes ingress controller, what it looks like and how to deploy it. So check out the source code below and follow along. So the first thing we're going to need is a Kubernetes cluster and an example application that requires an ingress. So I have this Kubernetes cluster on um, Docker for Windows and we can also see um, it has no namespaces so it's an empty Kubernetes cluster. So what I'm going to do is create an example app namespace that's going to house our example application. So what I'm going to do now is in that example app namespace I'm going to apply a deployment file. So it's deployment.yaml it lives in the structure of Kubernetes we've got deployments, config maps, um, secrets, services and ingress which we're going to cover in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy that example application. It also requires a config map and a secret so I need to apply a config map and then I also want to apply the secret.yaml. Now for my example app I'm also going to apply a Kubernetes service. This is a private service that's not publicly exposed so that will basically um, tell Kubernetes to route traffic to our pods and because this is, service is not type load balancer this is where the ingress comes in so the ingress controller will help to expose the, the service publicly. Okay so now we can say kubectl get pods and we can see our example application is up and running. Given this application is private it does not have public access so we can't access it via an IP address or a load balancer and that is why we need an ingress. So for the time being what I've done is port forward to the application over port 5000 and we can see here in the browser that my application is now up and running. Okay, so to deploy an ingress controller, this is very self-explanatory. We're gonna need a bunch of YAML files. So it's under Kubernetes, ingress, controller. I also have a video on traffic. So if you wanna um, check that out, check the link down below, but we're gonna cover the Nginx deployment. Now, the first thing we're gonna need is to apply a namespace. Namespace allows us to isolate all the things we're about to deploy into a single group. So what I'm gonna do is say kubectl apply dot slash kubernetes ingress controllers 
nginx and I'm going to apply the namespace file first. If we take a look at the namespace.yaml, it's very self-explanatory. <clears throat> it's just a little namespace called ingress-nginx. And then what we're going to do is deploy a service account. Now a service account allows the process to run with a set of permissions, giving ingress the ability, the ingress controller, the ability to do what it needs to do. So if we take a look at the service account.yaml, it's also very self-explanatory. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that service account.yaml and that's going to go ahead and create the service account in that namespace. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the set of permissions that that service account needs. So if we take a look at the um, cluster role, the cluster role is the permissions that Ingress will need. So basically what it needs to do is list and watch config maps, endpoints, nodes, pods and secrets. It needs to be able to get nodes. It needs to be able to get list watch services. Um, create and patch events and most importantly get list and watch ingress resources as well as update ingress statuses so to apply that we're going to say kubectl apply and we're going to apply the cluster role file so that's going to apply the set of permissions now what we need to do next is we need to actually um, bind those roles to the service account so i'm going to kubectl apply a role binding now what this will do if we take a look at the file is this will simply bind our service account um, to the set of roles that we've just defined. So this will give our service account ability um, to do all those permissions that I just described, giving our ingress controller the power to do what it needs to do. The next bit we're going to take a look at is the config map. So configmap.yaml has a bunch of configuration. Now Nginx has a ton of flexibility um, in terms of configuration. So go ahead and check out the um, Nginx controller documentation under the Nginx configuration there's a config map section with a massive amount of configuration options that you can apply. Now for example I've just applied a few of them so you can see what they look like. There's client body buffer size, there's things like turning up the verbosity of logs um, and then also the log format so you can customize the format of the log you want to write. Um, also, it allows you to do certain things like location snippets and service snippets. So you can inject custom um, Nginx configuration files or Nginx Lua scripts for each ingress rule that applies. So if you take a look, I've done an example here, which is a location snippet, which is an, pointing to another conf file that's part of this custom snippets config map. And here you can basically write any kind of Lua script that you want for each ingress rule that's deployed. So just an example here that you'll find on the internet, it's for cross-origin resource sharing. So if you are debugging microservices running on different ports over local host, you can enable local host um, cores rule here. Um, I've left this one in again as an example so you can kind of fiddle around with it. So what we're going to do to apply that is we're going to say kubectl apply, we're going to apply the config map. The other bit here that's um, self-explanatory is there's a specific config map for TCP services as well as UDP services, um, which I've left blank, but it allows you again flexibility to expand that out as needed. The last bit I'm going to apply is the custom snippets config map. That's the one with uh, custom location and service snippets that if you want to if you want to set those, and that is our config map. So that is going to give us the ability to control what the ingress controller can do. So now that we have all the bits and pieces in place, we can go ahead and apply the deployment file. So the deployment file, if we take a look at that, is very simple. Um, we're going to apply two replicas of the Nginx ingress controller, which is this image version. Very important that you always um, point, uh, fix it to a specific version. And then we also tell it where the config map is, where's the TCP and UDP service config maps. Um, and then the rest is all pretty self-explanatory. We volume mount our custom snippets in. So you can change this around if you want to mount uh, different snippets into your ingress controller. We set a liveliness probe and a readiness probe and then we have a volume for our custom snippet. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that deployment file and that'll also apply it in the same namespace. So I have namespaces on each one of these YAML files so that you don't accidentally apply it into a different namespace. Okay, and if we do a kubectl get pods inside that namespace, we can see our ingress controller is up and running. So the final bit that we're going to do is deploy a service of type load balancer. And what Kubernetes will do in this case, if we take a look at that service YAML, 
um, we can see that we basically just apply, apply a service called type load balancer and we expose port 80 for the health check and port 443 for our SSL based services. What Kubernetes will do is it will go and create a load balancer depending on the cloud provider we're running. Because I'm running Docker for Windows here, it's going to run the service over local host. So what we're going to do is say kubectl apply, we're going to apply that service. And the last bit that I'm going to need here is I've created a self-signed SSL certificate for this demo. And the reason we want to um, deploy a self-signed certificate is because I want to show you how to get TLS and SSL working because I'm sure if you're going to use this in production, you're going to want a real certificate. So you're going to need to come in and create a TLS secret. So I've got TLS.cert, TLS.key, and this is a Kubernetes secret of type TLS. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that file, but make sure you apply this TLS secret in the namespace where your application lives. Because remember, in a microservice world, you might have different services running over different hosts and they require maybe different SSL certificates. So I'm going to, um, this specific certificate is for my application. So I have a namespace example app and I'm going to call this the test TLS certificate here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. So this, I'm not applying this in the ingress controller namespace. This, this TLS certificate is specific to that microservice. So the ingress controller gives us the flexibility to have multiple TLS certificates and the developer doesn't have to know about the certificate. All they do is um, describe the secret name in a YAML file. So now that we have our ingress controller deployed, we can go ahead and deploy ingress rules. Now remember, you can have multiple ingress rules per ingress controller. So this is kind of up to the developer to decide how they want to ingest the traffic. So what I've done for our example app, I've created an example ingress uh, rule. So let's take a look at that. So we have kind ingress and we basically tell Kubernetes that this is an Nginx ingress controller. So you can run multiple types of ingress classes with different you know, API gateways. And we want our application to, re to receive the traffic on its root path because we don't have any routes defined in the application. We also deploy this to our example app namespace. We specifically say we want TLS enabled here. So we're expecting traffic on 443. Um, we want to run over this host um, DNS name. Now I have a host file set for that DNS. I don't own a DNS with that name. So what we then do is we say secret name and we, we, we indicate to Kubernetes what secret we want to use for SSL. This helps us abstract away the secret from the developer so the developer doesn't have to have access to the SSL certificate. So it helps to keep it secure. We then define a rule to say traffic is going to come in over this DNS and it's going to come over a blank path. So it's just going to come over that DNS straight up and then we tell it to go to our example service. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that example ingress file under Kubernetes ingress ingress-nginx.example going to go ahead and apply that and we should now be able to access our app over the browser URL. So if we go to the browser and we go to that DNS, we can see I've been, I was able to hit my application. So very, very simple um, way of routing um, using an ingress controller. So what I'm also able to do is I can define specific routes. So I can have like v1 slash hello. And then what I can do is I can define multiple paths. So I can do something like um, define v1 and then I can also say I want v2 of my application to go to another service so I could say it's maybe service dash v2 or something like that so if I go ahead now and apply that file we can now see that we can access our application over different URLs so if we refresh this we see it's no longer found but then we can go to v1 slash hello and we can access our application over that URL. We can also change it to V2 and also access it over multiple URLs. So this is kind of the URL routing feature that um, the Ingress controller gives us. So that is it for the Ingress controller video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was useful. Let me know down in the comments what sort of stuff you'd like me to cover in the future. And remember to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.